This is the tool we used for the top race. This is from Northwoods Airheads. Um, it's a nicely made tool. It's a much better tool and easier to use and a hell of a lot more affordable than that freaking giant hunk of shit BMW sells. Um, no sense wasting $400 on the one from BMW. I think these were $40 or something. Uh, might have been even less. It's adequate, it works well. However, on this lower race, we don't have to do any of that. We are, let's see if I can set this camera up for you. Watch. Bear with me as I plant my fucking face to the floor. Yeah, that'll work. Here we go. Welder is ready. Get my cutters up there. Start with clean wire. And we're off. how easy it is. I'll take the MIG welder method over anything else. Anytime. So we have our steering stem that was in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. See while it's not quite frozen. It's cold at least. Clamp it in the vise. dust seal on now. You get busy, you get nervous about dropping this bearing on, you forget. Next thing you know, you got the bearing on, no fucking dust seal, and then it all goes to shit. It's good. And our bearing's nice and toasty. Our stem is cold. Here goes nothing. Ta-da! That's the fucking way it's supposed to go. Now, grease. Pack that with grease while it's hot. See how easy that is? Heat and cold. You gotta use them. This will not work. Hot. Even pressing the stem in is a big fucking pain in the ass if everything is at room temperature. Do it right. Freeze the stem, heat the bearing. As you saw, everything just drops together nicely like it should. That way there's no fatigue on any of the parts. You don't have to wail on anything. Sometimes if the bearing isn't hot enough, you need to have a fork tube that fits that bearing on the inner race. And then you can just usually just gently slap it a couple times and it'll go in. So you pack this with grease, we're gonna spin the bearing around so the rollers pull the grease in. And next we're going to do, we're going to install our new bearing races into the steering head. Okay, we have just removed these from the freezer. This race by itself matches the bearing that we just dropped onto the lower steering stem. You want a socket that is going to fit the outer edge of the race without buggering anything up. You're going to fit this into place. Sean's going to give that a gentle tap. You can do this with a 2x4 as well. Go ahead, that's just slag. Oh, I actually took a clip. Walk around, walk around the edge. Yeah. 
make sure it's seated up here in this ridge. Failure to seat that completely will result in what you think are properly adjusted steering head bearings when you first do this job and then they will be very very sloppy clip over there they'll be very sloppy shortly thereafter because it's going to pound that lower race up into the steering head until it bottoms out usually by the time that happens the new bearings will be junk because the races will be indented from the roller on the bearing being loose so we'll grab our other bearing Pick up our fucking mess here. Grab this pig open. Right now we're not going to use the bearing. We're going to use the race. Remember how it goes. Wider taper to the top. The bottom would be the opposite, obviously. Otherwise you couldn't fit them. This one I want you to grab a 2x4. Four. 4x4 four four or something. 2x4 I guess. Seems the one right there. Make sure. Or is that too long? That's too fucking long. Hold on. All right. We do this because there isn't really a whole lot of room. Be careful not to grab any wires. It's gonna. It's gonna split it. It's okay. socket. Grab the socket. Waste some time. It's getting warm. Get a longer extension if you need it. Same as the other one. Coax it in. Center it and drive it home. I would favor the right side. You're a little bit crooked to the left. This is hard to do with the instruments and all the shit in the way. You're way crooked. Hold on. Let's flop the shit over to that side. Yeah, you're not even fucking close Jesus there. Christ. He won't help you. He designed this fucking... Eh, never mind. You're getting it. Be back. This now that that little dilemma is correct, favor the front more. Front, yeah. There you go. Okay, now you're gonna have to center it on the race. We get a little ways to go. Same as the bottom, you need to make sure that this seats completely. This one's being a little bit difficult because it's warming up. We've lost our cold advantage. And it wasn't all that cold anyway, because my fucking refrigerator freezer's taking a dump. Refrigerator's useless. Freezer's running about 34 degrees. I think it's there. Sounds like you're there. You're there. That's it. I don't like the way this bearing has seated. It's flush with the top here. It's, well... Yeah, it's it's almost flush with the top here, but it's recessed over there where it should be. So, this is a good opportunity to show you how this tool works. Loosen it up. Hold that for a second. We're going to fucking bang the tool into place. Sean's going to go down. We're going to turn this nut in here. 
See, even here we have fuck ups, and again, the fucking thing doesn't fucking even bite properly. What the fuck is that gonna do? That ain't gonna do shit. Well, we can try it. You want it? You're not, there you go, stop. Get my 27 millimeter wrench. Push it up a little bit, okay. Go for it. Okay. I don't think that's gonna work. Maybe, you got your brass punch. Here, take that, I'll get it. With delays, with delays, and delays. So, our little washer there is expanded. And it came right out. Very nice. That worked well. I'm impressed. Uh, again, those are that tool is available from Northwoods Airhead. There is your address. I didn't write down what I paid for it, but I know he has prices on his website. So now we freeze, we use a new bearing and a new bearing race and we go and freeze that and then we'll try this again. This is the impatient bastard way of freezing these. That ain't gonna work either. Stick your tongue to that. <laughs> we got. Oh, it's colder than that. It's colder than that. It's fucking frozen. It's frosty. All right. So we set that down in there. Grab a freaking hard two by four. Fuck them pine things. Or a 4x4. Four four. It was a 4x4. Four four. You got room. You got room. Yep, 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 yep. Perfect. Fucking perfect. Camera need... Maybe that's not perfect. Nah, that sucks. Back to what we used previously. Yeah. We are too far to the front because the bars need to move that way. Yeah, whack the back. Just split. It's time for the socket. Yeah, why don't you take the camera? Oh, shit. Good. While we are very close, we are not there yet. We really need more slack out of this fucking thing. Okay, that's good. 
If you can pull a camera, I ain't gonna see shit from there. I can run on top of it. There we go. That's it, we're bottomed out. We're in good shape. That one was, again, a pain in the ass, but not as bad as a previous one. At least we're straight now. K75s have a damper in the steering head. There's some controversy over whether you need to do this or not, but for the sake of the fuck of it. There you go. We're gonna put this in. The reasoning behind this is so that the threads don't nick the little rubber fucking tube here. Which I don't know how the fuck would even be possible unless you're a complete freaking baboon. So there's that, that's in place. my tape off you'll see it's being held in all by itself it's being held by the damper any other bike wouldn't do that it would fall right out as soon as you let go but this doesn't actually grip it so and I suppose if you nicked it with these threads maybe it would cause damage by the way the steering stem is made I don't see how the hell you could nick it unless you just weren't paying attention. So, anyway, that's that. Sean's gonna hold on to the bottom of the triple clamp, drop the bearing in, or I'll go hold the bottom of the clamp. I got it. Bearing in place. Now we need the big knurled nut. which we still have to clean up and take the bearing off of. To get the upper steering stem bearing out of this uh, top nut, you're gonna have to heat the bearing race. This is very hot, and then you'll notice there's two holes on the top. Usually we do this when we disassemble these fucking things, but apparently it didn't happen. Here, hang on to that with one hand. All you're gonna do is work your way through with a Punch a little bit at a time. Hey, give me my punch back. All right, I'll get you back after. Throw it away. Look for some new ones. These things are fucking beat. This is one of the few models that also has the goofy little dust cap that we put on the lower stem on the upper tube. So, that's that. Now our bearing's out. You could, if you wanted to heat this up, put this in your oven at 240 degrees. 250 doesn't have to be all that precise and uh, Let it bake for a little while and Then you can come out cradle it on your on your vice or something two blocks of wood that metals better if you want something solid and uh, Tap tap onto each of these and that'll push the bearing right off so Now we just have to extract our fucked up drifts oh. 
You need that finger anyway. No. Getting sick of cutting my nails. <laughs> yeah, you need a bigger one. Anyway, that's that. And to move along, here we go. So, we have our new dust shield in place. The stem has been in the freezer. Not quite cold enough, so we're going to make it a little colder. Like that. Whoa, slushies. Yeah. Fork tube. Fork tube. Fortunately, this is a little long. Actually, a socket that fit in there would have worked. Would work better. I don't know if you'll get much of this. Anyway. Yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's how you do that. Excuse me. All right. Good. You hit that with the blowgun a little bit, dry it off, and uh, slobber some more grease on it, and then we can start installing this. Putting this thing back together. All right, nicely greased. On it goes. Where it stops, nobody. And nobody cares. We were laughing. It's in the union misleader today. Some fucking chucklehead. Spent $2,600 at the fair, got a carnival for the ball toss, throwing two softballs in a five-gallon plastic pail. $2,600 later, and he didn't win. So he went back the next day and complained to the management, and they gave him $600 cash back and a giant Rastafarian stuffed banana. I don't know, to shove up his ass or what he was supposed to do with that, but... So he called the police because he thinks he was he was wronged because he spent twenty six hundred dollars at the carnival. Who the fuck goes to the carnival with twenty six hundred dollars? Fucking jerk off. I feel I was taken advantage of. Yeah. <laughs> Let me confirm it for you, dummy. What a loser. Anyway, that's the humor for the day. Oh, yeah, you could twist that down a lot more. Now that we push that back up. So that's it. You're going to thread it down as you see. We're still sloppy here. Oh, Jesus. Is this thing in the way? Could be. <coughs> I'd say yes. Turn that whole nut backwards. There you go. Now back the center off. <laughs> there you go. We can install the forks. The right way. <laughs> they don't work too good backwards. First forward count them all. Yeah, there you go. Looks good to me. I think. Hold on. Now we get cables caught. Back down, if that's possible. Good. Okay. There are no cables hanging on the outsides of the fork tubes. Everything goes inside. Cables and wiring. Up. Get 
nagged on this tube. This is kind of a bitch to do. Up? No. What? I can't say that. You're going up on the right. The left is not. There you go. <clears throat> up more on the right side. The other side. Well, let me hit the pole. There we go. Now you can crank it. We're close on the left side. The other side's got to go up some more. So it takes some grunting and twisting. And little love taps with a rubber mallet. Close. That's close. Now that those are in place, you want to put the axle in and make sure it rotates freely. That's fucking perfect. Leave it in. Yeah, excellent. Good call. On, on the height of the fork tubes. Our next step is going to be torquing the lower pinch bolts, which we will look up and see what the torque is. Unfortunately, I did not have deep headed Allen bolts, so we are back to reusing the shitty stock ones. And then the top bolts, if these don't have copper on them already, are going to get copper. They're already done. So that's it. I'm going to look up the torque specs. The bottom is going to be a higher torque than the top, I'm sure, due to the difference in the thread uh, the bolt size. And then we're going to proceed with reassembling our dash pad. We're not reassembling the dash pad. Our next step is going to be reassembling the front wheel brake calipers, fender, etc. and then we're going to adjust the steering head. And then we're going to put the dash pad on and then this job will be done. The lower pinch bolts call for 40 to 45 Newton meters, which personally I feel is fucking outrageous for a shallow headed bolt. Crank them bars the other way. Yeah. What did you do? 35? Yeah. yeah. I like 35 better. Wonderful. What was the top? 19 to 23. After this, we're going to reinstall the front wheel and the front fender and the calipers. Our radiator cover. You know what? Oh, Warren, we don't really want to torque these yet. Because it's got they also have to be loose so they float as we tighten the steering head as you adjust it it's going to bring the upper triple clamp down bottom up so these need to be able to move so we are going to loosen them again just the tops not the bottoms but anyway not much time wasted there uh, now it's going to be time to reinstall our radiator cover the little uh, bat wing trim panel and our front wheel, fender, and front calipers. 
And then with the weight of the front wheel on the forks, we can adjust the steering head bearings to the proper setting. They're going to need to be readjusted again anyway, 600 miles or so down the road, because by then everything beds in. If you hammered the races in properly and you are able to get the proper adjustment during this assembly, then at 600 miles later, you may not have to adjust them at all, but you should still check them. As I said, if they're loose, you fuck up the bearings and you're doing this job all over again. Going up. Going up. So at this point, we're going to wear uh, this panel flip back around up to where it goes. Actually, I'm going to douche that radiator out before we do that. All right, we're going to clean that radiator out. This is Chris's Polish freaking power wash. it up. Oh, it appears to have survived. You'll see that now we are clean. Not that these need even better cooling. The cooling fan hardly ever comes on anyway. Speaking of which, we, uh, oh, I checked that before. So that's it. Now we assemble the front end. I would like to point out one abnormal issue with K75 with ABS with Y spoked wheels. You'll notice the lettering is on the left of this rim, completely opposite of the rear. Now, normally, the stampings on a BMW wheel are always on the right side of the motorcycle. So you would look at this and say, hey, some freaking boob put the wheel on, the rim on backwards, even though the tire is on the right direction. That's not the case with this. Um, there was this model and there's another that that had this issue with the rim being around the other way but anyway this is uh this is assembled correctly so at this point we are putting our caliper bolts in you will notice there's two bolts one has a washer one has a formed washer on it and a sh it's a shouldered bolt these go in a specific place one of these holes is a little larger than the other this shouldered bolt goes in the top the bolt with the washer goes in the bottom should have copper on these too just a little bit those are going to get torqued to 30 newton meters our axle is going to be 30 newton meters. Our pinch bolts are going to be 20 newton meters. And then we're going to put the fender on. All this crap's reinstalled. And then we're going to adjust the head bearings. Right now, they feel pretty damn good. So, go ahead and assemble that. And we'll be back shortly to recheck the adjustment. With the front wheel reinstalled, the front end put together, you want to show, grab these. Make sure you don't have any plate. Don't be deceived by the forks going up and down. You're looking for movement that way. These are good. You want to feel, you want to move the front wheel side to side with the forks. Jesus. By the tire, you want to make sure the forks don't bind, that they're not sloppy, and that the front end doesn't go slam 
all on its own and fall over to the side. It should have a little bit of resistance, which this does. So we're good. At this point, we're going to tighten up. This collar is fine, so we don't have to fuck with that anymore. Our next step is going to be reinserting that nut. Well, what about the center? The center you're just going to turn with a wrench till it bottoms without putting much pressure to it. As you see, I don't answer the fucking phone. It's just freaking annoying. I would love to run this business with no telephone at all. Email. Yeah, you can get that with a box and wrench from the side. Our head bearings are torqued now. The upper triple clamp pinch bolts were torqued. 19 to 23 newton meters. Did you torque the center nut on the steering stem? What was would that call for? 40 newton meters. And we're good. Pump up your front brake because you've had the front wheel off, so the pads have been pistons have been pushed into caliper. So pump that up before you get the fucking surprise of your life when you go to roll it off the lift and grab the front brake and you don't have any. And that's it. Uh, that's how you change the steering head bearings in a K75. Um, we did this video because it's, it's, this is a topic that's severely lacking on YouTube. We only found one other video uh, regarding K-bike steering head bearing changes. So here you go. This is it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you can use it. Um, don't let your meat loaf.